well, I think English is incredibly practical in, you know, especially the various ways you engage with it. Yeah. And, and also relating it back to ultimately to try. It's ultimately to try, but also it's like the invisible tether of communication, right? Right. It is how we language, and it's not necessarily English, but whatever language, the invisible languages we connect with other humans with. I think it's all energy, like, right? It's, it's English as just whatever language it is, whether it's visual language, verbal language, it's just energy. And you're, we become practitioners of like tuning that energy in particular ways. Mm-hmm. Act, like it, to, to sort of, I would say sharpen our antenna um, to to receive the signals and to convey the signals. It's like a transmission process. Um, more acutely, but yeah. I mean, I know animals communicate in various forms. I mean, I w- watch my dog and how they they set rules with each other, how they play, and in. You know, and, and they convey it very, very quickly, but very honestly. It's like, you know, it's my turn to chase you. <laughs> it's your turn to me for me. <laughs> we decided but, this in like quietly. <laughs> no, they just, they signal each other. There's a form of communication. They have rules, you know, and, it's, and some of it could be barking, but some of it's posture and all these things. But as humans, I really feel like so much of our, by communicating is one of the best reinforcements to push us to learn more. Because A, you get feedback from other people, but just the process of communicating. Uh, I mean, in demons, I, I always try to say, you know, I say this a lot, but an idea in a vacuum doesn't get any better. Oh, I know. Oh, so beautifully put. That yeah, is you got to you got to share beautiful. it with a small group yeah. at least. And you know what it requires? That sharing requires safety. Oh, it's that's true. To know that you're safe to make errors. Right. This, to to know that I'm safe to make errors without uh, receiving a kind of judgment that will deplete me. Right. And I think any learning process, the most at its foundation, it's it's a sense of safety. Oh, completely. Um, right? Because I'm guessing with demons, you just buoyantly allow them to make mistakes. Well, I mean, and we all we all do it. We all make mistakes right? and they're great learning processes. I mean, I, yeah. I, I love the, the process of building because it allows you to always push yourself to get better because you will never build something perfectly <laughs> the first yeah. time. Yeah, and this, and Max is also a genius. In see, I don't do electronics. I've fried so many circuits in my life. It's like, whereas Max just patiently takes it back apart, unsolders it, figures out what went wrong, puts it back in. Whereas, like, if I make a mechanic, I do more of the mechanical things. And so yeah. when I make a mechanical error, it's like, okay, let's you know cut it again, rethink it, do something, you know, figure out what went wrong. But this guy, one of the things I love about the building process is the assessment's yours. Oops. So the assessment's yours in the building process. Mm-hmm. How do you engage in such a way in your teaching that it's not just your assessment as the teacher that's the end-all be-all. It's pulling the student into their ability to assess their performance or, or their whatever or their process how do you do that what a great question my most of my assessments and it's so interesting i, I was at a recent um zoom talk with other practitioners in the field and they were talking about formative and summative assessments i don't know if you know about this mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, this is such a false binary. I, I'm, I'm, I'm running away from this because every summative assessment has to be formative and every formative assessment has to be summative in some way mm-hmm. as it's moot. Um, and so it's like, anyway, most assessments, if not all, actually all assessments I give, ultimately are so open-ended 
that they have to answer. And I, I tell them, the question that you are addressing in this entire class as a whole, not just each text, but the class as a whole, is solving the riddle that is you. So every assessment in some way is so deeply personal and it will be a person, it's like, for example, one of the assignments that I give sophomores at the end, the final assignment, um, the, there's a final exam too, but the final assessment is Claudia Rankin's um, book, Citizen. And it's a book on, it's, it's race and marginalization are the big like sort of um, issues that she's contending with. Now, their job, so I do have to give them some boundary, right? I do have to give them some limits. And the limit is you have to emulate the form of citizen, the style, the stylistic repertoire of citizen, verbally and visually. Hmm. Meaning the way the poetry is being written, you have to emulate it. It's called, there's a form, and this form in literary studies is called pastiche. You're emulating without, without degrading the work. You're actually emulating in a form of praise. So that's one part. The second part is you're emulating the form to create your own narrative of self-marginalization, how, or your own narrative of marginalization, meaning how are you marginalized in your world? And so they do have some boundaries, but it's ultimately very open-ended. And so, as you said, how do you assess yourself? Every self-assessment has to be a process of self-exploration. And they know that. Mm -hmm. Exploring their own experiences. They are constantly in a comparative mode with rank and citizen. And what's interesting is, you know, my students of color would, would, be, would say, you know, Sabrina, this is about race. And I'm a white student. I'm so privileged. And I will say, suffering often stems from a feeling of marginalization. And there is no human on earth who does not go through suffering. So figure out what it is for you. I'm not gonna tell you what it is. You can, you know, and so, and then some beautiful work comes out, right? Like mm -hmm. say to me that I don't, I have not felt pain. Where does pain come from? Because you felt some, some, rupture somewhere. So your, assess your assessment is ultimately self-exploration. Right. Exploration through a craft, through a text, you're, you're assessing your own experiences. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not like I'm assessing whether I'm getting an A or a B. It's like whether I am okay in life. <laughs> How do I go about, you know? Mm -hmm. That's like... That's a blessing of the field. It's hard to do that if you're dealing with geology, <laughs> right? Well, but yeah, I, I, yeah. I wonder though, if the assessment, if whatever assessment is given, ultimately asks the question, what is your account, what is your relationship between you and the earth of which you are composed organically? the earth to which you will return and you will dis your body will materially disintegrate to become microbial fodder that yeah. you are going to nourish the microbes and which are going, you know, so it's like you're returning to it, you're coming from it. What is your relationship, responsibility and accountability? Mm -hmm. And I wonder if, if assessment became personal mm -hmm. in some way, connected the material that they're working on, it just changes everything. One of um, the Earth System Science course, the, the, the final was, uh, became for many years the, um, uh, you're the last humans, and, you know, but you're not on Earth. And yep. did I freeze? John, you broke up. Can you again very quickly? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You're the last you're the last spaceship ship of humans any you know in the universe there are no other humans but somehow you come back to earth 
and there are no humans, but you have to take all your understanding of the geology in earth science you've learned that semester and find the top three locations to re-inhabit the earth. Oh, that's such a beautiful assignment. <laughs> and it's a group choices reveal how much you've learned. But I also make it a group final so mm -hmm. that the community, again, back to fostering the communication as, you know, it's not about just what they say to me, but what they share with each other to come toward a conclusion and then support their conclusion based on their dialogue. Um, I love that activity. And the kids get really up for it in that. That's a beautiful assignment. Yeah, they know it. They know there you go. the general yeah. what they have to prepare for. So they get together, they assign what, you know, who's going to work on what, you know, and, but including who's going to review everything. It's beautiful. What you just described to me is basically sophomore English where I teach them. First, you have to learn the tools you need for analysis. Mm -hmm. Then you have to figure out what tools should I use to do this particular work. That's the harder part. Like which tools to use and when. <laughs> That's what we deal with in math all the time. Right. Yeah, we, you know, because they move to the, the harder problems where you have these math, uh, you basically have your math tools and you have to be able to pick them out of your toolkit and put them together in the right order to solve that particular problem. Yeah, I, I think there, and, and what your assignment does that beautifully, which oh, is so much fun. you really need to know the tools. You need to know which tools you're going to use in order to figure out which, or which portion of earth to inhabit and then you have to explain why yep. not just the how but the why oh that's the yes and i do what you do uh, at least half my tests have open-ended questions where they're basically research questions and it's i'm not after right or wrong i'm after how do they support their conclusions what's their reasoning i love it oh i do too i mean that's they're longer to read but they're more fun <laughs> they're they're also, it, every assignment that a student writes and they know, I hope they know how much time I spend on each because I spend like an hour on each, like backward and forward and embedded in it. And it's not to assess them, to be honest. It's, it's, a, it's a selfish enterprise. I actually learn from it, it teaches me. Um, it teaches me how to teach better. It also teaches me things I don't know. Yep. Um, so it's a, I love, I, you know, and that's why, that's why comments take me longer because I have to put all of that into writing. <laughs>